Welcome to John Gets Excited, episode five. Today is October 9th, 2014, and there are a lot of things making me excited. The first thing is that there are 175 subscribers to this YouTube channel now. It was 99 just a month ago, and boom, it's 75% bigger. It totally blows me away. Uh, in bigger news, Essen Spiel in Germany is next week, which is one of the biggest board gaming conventions in the world. So there's all sorts of interesting, exciting games coming out right now. And six weeks from now is Board Game Geek Con in Dallas, Texas. And that's uh, closer to me because that'll be my first board gaming convention that I've ever been to. I don't know what's taken me so long to get around to this, but I'm finally fixing it. I'm flying out there on the Wednesday. I'll be there from Wednesday until Sunday. If you see me out there, say hi. That would be totally awesome. I'm trying to keep my schedule pretty open. I'm probably gonna be doing a bit of demoing for Portal Games. I'm gonna bring a couple games from a friend of mine's company, Nothing Sacred Games, try to get those demoed as well, but I don't know, I'm gonna try and keep it open as I can, talk to and play with as many people as I possibly can. I'm really excited about that. The first board game that I'm excited about and wanna talk about right now is called Koi Pond. It is right up here, and I got this just a week or two ago. I've played it twice now, so not enough to really like do a review of it yet, but this is a very interesting small card game. As you can see, there's not a whole ton of cards in there, and what you do on your turn is you have a hand of cards. Uh, in the very first turn, you have three cards, and you are gonna simultaneously, everybody at the same time, choose two of those cards, and you put one of them in front of you, and one of them kind of to the side of you. One of them is for your pond, and the other is for your river. And then you all reveal them at the same time, and then you deal out three more cards, and then you do that again, and you do that 18 times. And what ends up happening is your hand is gonna get bigger, and your pond is gonna get bigger, and your river is gonna get bigger at the same time. So the first turn, you have those three cards. You put one in the pond, one in the river, keep one in your hand, one, one, one. Second turn, you'll have two in your pond, two in your river, two in your hand. You're gonna keep doing this until there are six, six, and six. And then the scoring is quite interesting. In the river, you just score, you get these little ribbons that get you victory points at the end of the game for having the most koi of a specific color. So it's kind of area control majority that you're going for in the river fighting against everyone else. However, in the pond, you're trying to make, uh, you're trying to match the suit, uh, the color of these koi in your pond with your hand. So if I have two red koi in my pond and four red koi in my hand, then that's good. You match those two together and you score the lower value. So that would be worth two points for the red koi there. And then you shuffle everything up except for the river and all those river cards, those six, you push them into the middle of the table and then you start from scratch again. But this time you can start drawing from the face up cards in the middle of the table, which is called the lake. And you do all of this three times. So you have 18 simultaneous action plays. You score up the points and whoever has the most points wins. This is a really cool game. I, I really, and I, I'm not usually crazy about simultaneous action, but the fact that you do two of them at the same time, and I love having a small hand of cards and deciding what to do, and even the, what cards you decide not to play is very important because those are gonna score for your pond. It's just a neat little game. Uh, now there's another reason that this makes me excited, and that's because it's kind of, it's the first of a new model of getting board games, well I guess card games out there, that I've seen. Uh, I bought two other games by the designer, oh wow, I never even said his name. Daniel Solis is the designer of this game. I've got Monsoon Market and Light Rail. I got both of these up here as well. And I bought all of them at the same time. And the reason for that is because these weren't kickstarted, they weren't published by any general, uh, normal means of getting games out there. You buy them from a print-on-demand website called Drive Through Cards. And when you make the purchase, they make them and they send them out to you. Unfortunately, that means that there was a, you know, there's a shipping cost and all that, so I decided to make, get three of them all at the same time. And the, the games were actually, you know, they were each about $10 and the shipping was about $10. So it ended up costing me like $34 total. And I'm really excited for this idea because the designer is trying to put one game out a month and make money off that. <laughs> and it's just a really cool idea to be able to make games and not worry about putting it on a Kickstarter and shipping it to China and how many do you have and who's gonna distribute it. No, just do you want the game? Okay, here, click buy, they'll make it for you. Very cool model, I'm excited about. I'm gonna keep watching the games that he keeps coming out with and maybe in two months I'll buy three more of them. <laughs> the next game I'm excited about is called Machikoro and specifically with the Harbor expansion which is also coming out very soon. These are both designed by Masao Suganuma and the reason that this game has me excited, and I've been following this game for like a year, it's not exactly new, but it hasn't hit the United States yet, 
And the mechanics of why I find it interesting is because it kind of takes that settlers thing where you, you roll dice on your turn and you plus everyone else around the table might be able to get resources or do stuff based off of the dice that get rolled. And this game simplifies it, you do that, and then instead of putting dudes on a map and moving stuff around, you just buy more cards which evaluate when a specific number is rolled. So, you know, you roll a four, you're like, okay, cool, I get two money, it's my turn, I buy this card that'll give me something else when uh, every time a seven is rolled or only every time I roll a three or something like that. And so it's very simple in that respect. And I've been interested in the base game for a while, but I've read a lot of things about it where, so in the base game, all the cards are out. In a tableau, you can buy them every single game, no matter what. And that seems interesting enough for maybe a play or two, but I could see that getting old very quickly. However, there is an expansion coming out very soon, the Harbor expansion, which changes that entirely, where you just shuffle all the cards into a deck and you reveal them in a random order coming out from the top of the deck and you get to choose the cards that are on the tableau that are currently available to you. And I feel like that is the kind of game I wanna play. So I even if, if I get Machi Koro without the expansion, um, before the expansion arrives, I don't think I'm gonna play it. I think I'm just gonna keep it until the expansion arrives and then play them together. And even combined, it's probably gonna cost me only about 40 bucks. So it's not that expensive and that much of an investment to wait to get them both. But I think it's gonna be really fun when those get combined so you don't have every single game play out the same way so you don't try to do the same combo every single time because you don't know how the cards are gonna come out. So I'm really excited about that game. The Expansion is, I've heard it's coming out in late October, I've heard it's coming out in December, I don't really know. I'll be picking up Machi Koro as soon as I can and then I'll grab the expansion whenever it actually becomes available. The next game I'm excited about is called Versailles. It's designed by Andre Novak, who designed Praetor, which came out earlier this year, as well as Progress, which was a Kickstarter that I backed. And the reason this game is making me excited is because of this really cool worker placement slash rondel mechanism. If you think about it, you have a board, and in the middle of the board is kind of where you're gonna build the palace and gardens of Versailles. They're not there yet. And you have all of your workers on the board from the beginning of the game. And what you do on your turn is you just move your workers. You go from here to here, or here to here, and there's different spots around the outside of the board that get you stuff. They get you wood or marble or let you go up a technology or draw some uh, plans for building the garden, per se. And the reason this is interesting is because you don't actually block anyone by being in a space. Anyone could be anywhere as you're working these guys around, but there are different paths, so you don't always have to go in this order. You can kind of take a shortcut to the middle and then shoot over and kind of do a little thing over here or do a long one or lots of different options based off of where things are. Also, when you evaluate an action, it gets better if there are more people, more of your people on that space already. So if you have here one guy and you move another guy into it, you can either do a more powerful action for, you know, because you have two people there, or you could do two smaller actions. You need to evaluate the guy that was there already. So you're kind of moving your people around the board and everyone else is moving their people around the board. And this sounds like it might be kind of multiplayer solitaire. However, it's got two things going on that aren't. The first thing is that you can get these technologies which will allow you to evaluate a region if you have one of your people in it when someone else uses it. So you don't have to use your action to do it, just someone else will go there and they'll get their two or three wood and you'll say, thanks, I'm gonna take my wood too because I happen to have a guy there and I had that technology. Now the center of the game board is where you're gonna be building the palace and the gardens of Versailles and they have little green tiles for the gardens and little gray tiles for the palaces. And this is where it gets kind of Carcassonne where there are lots of placement rules. Like you can't put a garden right next to a palace. There's gotta be a wall in between them. And it looks like it can kind of evolve in various different interesting ways throughout each game. But this also looks like it can get very cutthroat and potentially analysis paralysis inducing because you can see what, I, what tiles I have and the tiles that that guy has. And I realize if he puts his tile there before I get there, I will never be able to play this tile. It'll just be dead to me, it'll just be one measly point at the end of the game. So now you're probably gonna be thinking, oh, how can I get this out there before he does? It's 100% open knowledge. You see where his guys are, where your guys are, you can figure it all out. That could potentially slow things down. I don't know, this looks like it's a medium weight Euro game that is not supposed to really get sloggy like that. So I have very high hopes for it. I'm looking forward to seeing what people think as they come out of Essen. On top of this, I have a slight hesitancy because this, this is the designer who did Praetor, which I was incredibly excited about, like jumping around excited about. And before I had the option to buy it, I started seeing things come in on Board Game Geek that kind of gave me pause and, oh wait, that's, 
that does seem like it's kind of a problem. And oh wait, that's, that's kind of weird. And there ended up being some official variants to try and kind of fix it. And I ended up not buying it because what it actually ended up being was not really what I was hoping it would be. So I'm hoping that's not the case with this game. I'm a little bit uh, more hesitant, but it's very likely I'm gonna grab this one as soon as I can, uh, especially if it gets favorable reactions from, from Essen. The last game that I'm gonna talk about today is actually pretty old. It's right behind me. It's called Keltis. And you might be saying, what the heck, John? That's the 2008 Spiel des Jahres winner. Why are you excited about that now? It's 2014. And I would say, well, that's because I actually didn't get uh, experience to this until somewhat recently, about eight or nine months ago on the iOS playing on iPad with my girlfriend. She found it and we started playing together and it's now like one of her favorite games. And I really like it too. It's a very cool game. It makes sense why it won the Spiel des Jahres. And it was hard to find, which is another reason that I'm excited. I had to pay like $70 to get it shipped over, but it was brand new. And up here in the top corner, I don't speak German, but this says there is an expansion map printed on the back side of the board. So it's just a great two-in-one combo where you have this basic map and then a alternate very complicated one. But I haven't even explained the game. Uh, so the way the game works is you just have hands of cards. There are five different suits and they range from zero to 10. And on your turn, you just play a card and then draw a card. And the, the key part of the game is that you can only play cards in ascending or descending order. So if you played a pink four and a pink two, then you have to play a pink five or more because you've dictated that it's ascending. Uh, or you could go from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 going down if that's kind of the way your hand, uh, what your hand gives you. And as you play these uh, cards out, you move your little t uh, stones up these tracks and you get victory points for them and there are several little bonuses it's actually a board game version of uh, another game by uh, Reiner Knizia. I didn't mention he's the designer, a very obscure board game designer, Reiner Knizia. Uh, this is the bigger version of a game called Lost Cities that was two player only, but that one you could only play cards in ascending order. So if you had a hand of all high cards, you're kind of in trouble. Whereas in this game, you actually have options. You could work down or up and play with it. Uh, I've only played it in the cardboard now a couple times, a bunch on the iOS, but I really enjoy playing this one with my girlfriend, two players. Also, four players has worked really well. It's like 45 minutes. It's like a really good super filler that y you can definitely get bad luck and just kind of not be too viable, but I've always had fun playing even when I haven't been doing terribly well in it. So definitely excited about this one. And that's it for today. This is certainly not the only things that are making me excited, but I've got to save some content for the future, right? Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you like what you've seen, and if you see me at Board Game Geek Con, please say hi. That would be totally awesome. Thanks for watching.